Good morning and welcome to the first official garden tour of 2021. If you're new to the channel, I am growing in zone 6A, Ohio and focus primarily on things I can eat with some flowers thrown in for the pollinators. So let's take a look at what's going on on this fairly chilly first week of May in the garden. Now right up front here I've got the strawberry bed. This thing is getting kind of out of control because I've just let the runners go wherever they wanted so I'm gonna trim it back after this year's harvest but I'm really hoping for a good harvest this year. We lost a lot of our berries to frost last year. I did have to cover this up because we just had a frost when this was all in full bloom but I'm seeing some small berries form and I have high hopes. Wish me luck. Now over here on the east side of the garden, I have a lot of raised beds. And I found that I like to do a combination of raised beds and in ground. And that is because first of all, the raised beds allow me to get in and plant really early in the spring. A lot of times my clay soil is just too wet and cold to get in as early as I would like. So these work really well for that. And also there are a few vegetable crops that prefer really, really well draining soil, a really loose soil that I find I have better results with in the raised beds. Carrots are a really good example of that. So what you'll see in the beds today are primarily a lot of early season, cool season crops. So you can see a lot of early spring crops in here, lettuces, endives, pansies, green onions, spinach, another bed of spinach, here are some overwintered onions that I'm testing out this year. Those are some green onions that have bolted. This lettuce was some that overwintered really beautifully. Carrots and more spinach and some nice endive back here, some brassica plants. And then back here, this is one I'm really excited about. This is Little Ben Gooseberry. And this is a dwarf gooseberry. And I've not had a chance to taste this variety yet, but we had some blooms on there earlier and it looks pretty happy and healthy. So, oh, there's some blooms right there. Oh, we got, look at there. We got some little baby fruit forming. So I'm excited about this guy. Back here is a full bed of carrots. And then my big raised beds up front here I've got a few odds and ends planted, but I'm kind of giving them a break because I had them planted with three successive crops last year. And then the rest of the garden are in ground raised rows or beds. Now you might notice a lot of row covers out here and that is not for frost protection. That is primarily for insect and critter protection. The number one biggest insect pest offender in my garden are the cabbage worms and these row covers work really really well because they keep the adult cabbage butterflies from laying eggs on my plants which in turn keeps the cabbage worms from hatching on my plants which in turn keeps the cabbage worms from devouring every single one of my brassicas <laughs> so i'm really appreciative for these covers the other pest that this helps prevent is a relative newcomer to the garden. Ironically, just recently a viewer asked me if I ever have trouble with rabbits in my garden, to which I somewhat smugly replied that no, my wonderful dogs scare all of the rabbits away. Well, the rabbits have outsmarted the dogs and figured out that if they get into the garden, they have this perfectly safe, protected, fenced in place to have their babies and an endless buffet of nutritious vegetables. Just last week, I had to relocate an entire nest of baby bunnies out of my vegetable bed and came out one morning to all of my beets and chards completely mowed to the ground. So I have found that these covers also keep the rabbits from making a buffet out of my garden. Now, one thing I wanted to point out 
This is actually a new type of insect netting that I am trying for the first time this year. And so far, I absolutely love it. So it does an awesome job of keeping critters out. But what I love is that you can see through it. With the lightweight insect fabric that I typically used to use, you cannot see through it. You have to get down on your hands and knees, take your fabric pins out, peek underneath and check on your plants, which when you've got a lot of plants is kind of a pain in the tuchus. Plus, this has a nice weight that's a little bit easier to work with, especially if you're trying to put this on when it's at all windy. So going forward, I am going to be switching, switching out my stash of insect fabric with this netting. I've got onions back here some collards that made it through the winter and they're just too pretty to cut down at this point. I love these flowers and so do the pollinators. This whole row is celery which I did have to cover back up to keep the bunnies from chewing on them. And this is all garlic that was planted last fall. Under this netting more endive. I really overdid it on the endive. There's no way I'm going to be able to eat all this. <laughs> It's a good thing my chickens like it. Radishes, more lettuce and brassicas, some late planted broccoli that I just put in. I got some spinach back here. Incredibly, the rabbits did not touch the spinach, which makes no sense to me at all, but I will take a small victory on that. More garlic, got some vetch cover crop, and that will get mowed down in time to plant some warm season crops. We've got some radishes. This little radish guy escaped me. Looky there. My chard is rebounding, but like I said, this was pretty severely nibbled off and they got everything on that side. So I replanted with Chinese cabbage. Lettuce down there. Again, they did not bother the lettuce, which I don't understand. Calendula, some tiara cabbage. This is a mustard cover crop. My kohlrabi is starting to form little bulbs down here, which I'm super excited about because if you've seen any of my old videos, you know that I may be the world's biggest fan of kohlrabi. And more kale that has gone to flower. Got some cauliflower under there. Peas. My, my sad little remnants of cauliflower here. This was one that I'm not sure if it was the rabbits or who it was, but someone came through here and just nipped all these off. I had an entire 20 foot row of cauliflower and I've only got about four plants left. Luckily, I've got some at my mom and dad's as well that did not get eaten. And back here, I've got fennel. This is bulb fennel. And this, you can see the hoops, this will get netting on it as well because Critters love fennel. I found that out the hard way. So these two rows are primarily planted in cover crop and these will be mowed down in time to plant my things like tomatoes and peppers and some of my warm season crops. I do have some potatoes back here. They got a little fried by the frost. You can see those black kind of burnt edges on there. That's from the frost, but they are sprouting up new green growth and will be just fine. And then the plan for this sad looking batch of weeds back here is chickens. So we're raising meat birds again this year and I decided this would be a perfect area to fence them in. I'm just gonna allow them to feed and scratch and poop back here. And then either this fall or the coming spring, I'll get in and convert this into gardens. But I figured that'll be a good way to add fertility to the soil, scratch up the weeds, and a place to keep the chickens nice and safe. So we'll see how that works. And then up front, I've got a couple more raised beds. You can see it's just kind of a mix of things going on in here. A lot of cilantro. This is more cover crop. Underneath here, we've got some kale. Baby rhubarb plant. more cover crop, collards, some artichoke underneath there, lettuce and broccoli. These are my volunteer pansies. 
more cauliflower and kale. These are some carrots that overwintered beautifully. I planted these um, at the beginning of last September and kept a row cover over them all winter and they've put on a ton of growth since the spring started. And not much going on over here. Some chard that overwintered, more cover crop, more volunteer pansies. And this is some wild thyme over here, which makes an excellent low maintenance ground cover. And it smells just beautiful. My potato grow bags. Again, a couple of these got hit with frost, but they seem to be coming out of it. And then a few edibles going on outside of the garden. This was an asparagus bed I put in last year. So I'll start harvesting some spears next spring. I also put some strawberries in here because I wanted to play around with the con because I wanted to play around with the concept of using strawberries as kind of a cover for the asparagus so I didn't have so many issues with weeds popping up in the asparagus bed. So we'll see how that goes. Over here, I've got more peas and grass that needs mowed very, very badly. And back here is my no dig potato experiment, which I've had a couple of little hiccups with so far, but there are potatoes growing. <laughs> so the first issue was that deer figured out this was out here unprotected and thought I had set out a nice little buffet for them. So I did have to put up this makeshift netting to keep the deer from nibbling. The other was that instead of using straw, I used hay, which tends to hold more water and get heavier than straw does. So I've had to go in here a couple times and fluff up the hay just to make sure that my potatoes weren't rotting underneath there. But even back there where you can't really see any green, there are little green sprouts coming up and I've got all of this growth already. So I might get some potatoes after all. And this area will be for tomatoes this year. I've just got it mulched very heavily to keep weeds and grass from sprouting up through there. This is my big old hugel culture bed in progress. This is kind of <laughs> taking way longer than it should, but this is just, I work on it when I get the chance. And hopefully I'll be able to get in here and plant this up with something maybe later this summer or even this fall. Elderberries are growing strong over here. Hoping for a big crop on these guys this year as well. And this area is a new strawberry bed. In addition to this spot, I also garden at my mom and dad's. So they have a lot more land there. So we typically put our big space crops in. So corn and pumpkins and squash and those types of things. I typically also plant a lot of my tomatoes there as well. They're a little bit more open. They get a lot more air movement. So I find that growing tomatoes there, I have less problem with some of the tomato diseases like blight and spot and all of those fun foliar diseases you deal with in high humidity situations. So there's not a whole lot going on over there yet, but I'll show you quickly what we do have out already. Over here, we've got raised rows prepped most likely cattle panels for tomato trellises will go over here and will plant indeterminate tomatoes. These rows are primarily brassicas, things like cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, and kale, and then some lettuce and spinach in the last row. And again, here you can see I used that same netting as I did in my other garden, and it's working really well here to keep the bugs and the bunnies away. some onions with lots of miscellaneous seedlings under the cover and lots of cover crops going on. Some canola and tiller radish and a strip of onions there too. Red clover and walking onions. More onions, canola, tiller radish, and yellow clover. For some reason I thought it was a good idea to put onions everywhere this year. Back here is a big plot that we solarized using a silage tarp. And this will be where the corn and pumpkins and winter squash are planted this year. Blackberries. Lots of peas on this cattle panel with fencing again to keep the bunnies at bay. 
potatoes. And this is where the pumpkins and winter squash were last year. This year I'm converting it into a fruit plot. So I'll be planting things like bush cherries, gooseberries, currants, hascaps, and probably some other things I haven't decided yet. And here's some hops I planted last year, which will be staying and it will climb up this arbor really nicely. And lastly, the garlic bed. And of course, the last little bit of gardening goodness is all the plants that are sitting in the greenhouse just waiting on me to plant them. I'm waiting till about May 15th for tomatoes and peppers and things like that, but they are ready. So we've got a few in this greenhouse. And a few in this greenhouse. Oh, and a bunch of fruit plants too that need to go out. Thank you for letting me share my garden with you. And be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more updates of the garden throughout the growing season. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.